Hey everyone, Chris here from Real Rideshare Stories. And Dustin from Dustin is Driving. And we're joined with Jose, who is the driver where we talked about in the news article from yesterday's video, which was still pretty crazy nonetheless. And he's on to share a little bit more of his experience and what was going on and talk a little bit more because the news doesn't cover everything. So <laughs> hello, Jose, how you doing? I'm doing good. I've been better. Yeah, oh, I could imagine. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you want to share your story and what had happened and, and you know, go from there. It's, it's a crazy story. Um, I'm sure people have gave birth before in their cars, which I know has happened. But with this story, it covers four different parameters. It covers a parameter of I picked up a lady and she was going to the hospital. I may not know if she was in labor or not when I picked her up, but it would have been nice if she told me that she was because there was a hospital four minutes away from where I picked her up. Mm -hmm. But she didn't say anything and I kept driving and uh, halfway through the ride, she started screaming. I said, are you okay? You're freaking me out. She's like, she's fine. Uh, 30 seconds later, she screams again. And I'm like, are you okay? She's like, it's this baby. I'm like, what baby? She's like, it's coming. The baby comes out. I'm in traffic. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that when the baby was first born, it cried and then it stopped crying. What do I do with this situation? Do I pull over, call 911, and maybe have the baby die? I know I can get to the hospital in like seven minutes from where I was at. So I put the uh, pedal to the metal, um, weaving through traffic. I'm blowing through stop signs, honking my horn, speeding, trying to get there because at this point, it's about the baby not dying. Mm -hmm. I get to the hospital. All these people are there. They come out. I'm trying to take pictures, not of the baby or the lady giving birth. You know, I'm trying to take pictures for evidence that this has happened so I can send it to Uber because they don't uh, necessarily ever agree with the driver. Mm -hmm. And it's not like this. It's not like this happens all the time. So definitely, want to have your proofs. And they're like, "Oh, well, what do you need a cleanup fee for, or something like that?" Yeah. And you're like, "Look, I just dropped this lady off at the hospital. This just happened in my car." Yeah. Mm -hmm. On top of that, uh, that being said, all these medical people rush out. They cut the cord, you know, and they ask the lady, "When was the baby born?" The lady doesn't know. I'm yelling at the doctor seven minutes ago because that's how long it took me to get from where I was got to the hospital. They do everything they do. They cut the umbilical cord. They're warming the baby. The baby's crying. Okay, it's fine. Uh, now, the second issue would be that, okay, I go to the hospital to try to get any kind of information to prove that this happened. They can't give me anything because of uh, confidentiality agreements, you know, HIPAA laws and this and that. Mm -hmm. Great. So now the first thing I do when I end the ride is call Uber and explain to them that I need to speak to a supervisor, 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 because the first level people can help me. They tell me that all I got to do is go get it uh, detailed and all that. So great. The next day at nine o'clock in the morning, luckily I had another car, my daughter's car that was supposed to be detailed. I take my car instead, I tell them the story. They tell me they can't detail it because of bodily fluids, the blood, and this and that, it's soaked through my seats. There's no way they can do it. I have to get my seats repaired. And that's, and that's what a lot of people don't realize. I noticed some people were commenting on the other videos saying, just get it cleaned and everything else. People don't realize you can't just have uh, you know, body, bodily fluids like that. That's, that's hazardous waste. That's why they mm -hmm. have those signs and stuff when, they take, you know, when you go to the hospital, if there's those certain bins with the red bags that you know, you're not supposed to be touching, you have to be very careful about. And it's not just simple as just getting it clean, and especially with fluids and stuff like that. I mean, all that's not going to, it's not like it's just sitting on top of, you know, you have plastic on the seats and you can just wipe it clean or throw away that plastic. So mm. that's what people have to realize. I mean, go ahead. And, and on top of that, it's COVID virus season. Exactly. I, I mm. mean, people won't even touch your pizza when they're being delivered, not, not less bodily fluids and all that. So as soon as they tell me that my back seats have to be uh, replaced, I call Uber. Again, I, you can't help me. I need to speak to a supervisor, 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 because this is out of the norm. 
I get the run around. I tell them what's going on. They said they'll call me back. Four hours pass by and no one's contacted me at all. So I call WGN, which is one of the news stations out here. I tell them my story. They get back to me within 30 minutes and say they want to cover the story because this is something they've never heard. Way uh, faster than Uber support. Yeah. <laughs> I meet the reporter. They, they do the show and this and that. The next fold of the story is like the lady used a, a fake name. So not only can I get any information, she used a fake name. And my whole thing is like, how is that safe for the driver? Mm -hmm. Part of the other reason is that, first of all, what if the baby died in my car? What if the mother died in my car? Who's responsible? Am I responsible? I know, yeah. Who's fault would it be? That's that's the big thing right there. Yeah. What if I had an accident on the way of doing all this, trying to save the baby's life? No one's talking about that. Okay, all that has happened. Now I'm dealing with Uber. I, uh, the news report goes on, and I hear nothing. The, the report came at 5 o'clock news. At 7.30, I get a call from Uber telling me, do I want to file an um, insurance claim? Yeah, after paying a thousand dollar deductible, like get real. You exactly. Have to pay for that In the back of my mind, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, really, an insurance claim? I got to pay a thousand dollar deductible, get it cleaned, my wages. If somebody hit my car, at least I can get recoup that money from their insurance. You know, my lost wages and this and that. They said that's all they can do. Well, I have a couple of drinks. I go to bed. When I wake up. I see that uh, Uber released saying that they're already in contact with the driver and is helping the driver, you know, to replace whatever needs to be replaced. That is totally false. They never contacted me. All they contacted me was for the insurance claim. And I'm more upset that they're lying, telling people that they're already helping me when they haven't. So I'm calling Uber over and over and over again. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I finally get in contact with somebody who's higher up, higher up, higher up, telling me how they're going to fix this and they're going to call me back. They haven't called me back. I'm still waiting. That's like talking mm -hmm. cheap right there. We need you to show yeah. some action. So then I finally get a call from Uber, the insurance claim adjuster, telling me that this has never happened before and they're willing to give me a one-time payment of $1,500. And I'm like, wait a minute, fifteen hundred dollars? It's going to cost fourteen, thirteen hundred just to replace the seats, plus a, a detail of one hundred and fifty. How is that making me whole? So I called him again, and I said, "Look, I'm not looking to make money. I just want you to repair my stuff and pay me for my time off. And if you have to do it on the low end and factor in the average of the last three weeks." I'm okay with that. No, they can't do that. And I'm over here like, okay, I got three or four other media outlets that want to talk to me. I got 10 lawyers that want to represent my case right now and then. Why wouldn't you just fix it and make it right? It's not my fault that you let people call an Uber instead of an ambulance. You have no protocols when something like this happens. What if they died? It's, it's so many variables. It has never happened. And yet, I can't speak to somebody from Uber. They're sending me their lackeys to talk to me and try to talk me down on a price. The last call I got from them was not that long ago, talking about, what about $2,000? And you sign a confidentiality agreement not to talk about this. I said, look, man, I get what you're trying to do. I know you're trying to do your job, but my God. My, my, my seat's destroyed. I have to get it replaced. Not to mention, it's going to take three days before they even get the parts in. And now I'm not driving for the next five or six days on top of it. $500? I can make that in a day and a half. I have over, over 12,000 rides with Uber alone only in the last two years. 
I don't do this for beer money. I don't do this, you know, to get some extra money to go see a movie. I do this for a living and this is what I do and I make a lot of money doing it. So my whole thing is like, really, you want to sit there and bicker and have the chance of me going to the media and making it bigger than it is because it's not all about the baby. It's not about how, you know, the baby's fine, but the baby could have died. Who's responsible? Really, you let people use fake, phony names? How is that safe for the drivers? You know, what if this person bought a gift card from Uber and used a phony name and something worse were to happen? There is no record of anything. Mm -hmm. And that happens often, too. Yeah. Not so, to mention the third party riders all the time that use somebody else's account. Mm -hmm. And then when something bad does happen, they don't give up the person's name. And then, and then they try to even deny the ride even happened. Like, well, I didn't take the ride. You got the wrong passenger. It's like, no, 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 no. They had all my info. They had to only get it from you then, obviously. The funny thing is that they send me a thing telling me, can you please provide the name of the person, the time of the ride, and the trip ID. I provided all that except for the trip ID because the last Uber installment that they made for their app, uh, we cannot longer see how much the writer pays anymore. Yeah. And mm -hmm. in that section showed the trip ID number. Now we can't even get a trip ID number because they deleted that from us watching to see how much the, the, uh, the writers pay. It's like, it shouldn't be that hard. It's the last trip I took, obviously. Yeah. That's what I told them. So now I'm here just stuck in limbo. They're lying to the TV news saying how they're helping me out, but they're not. They're lowballing me. And at this point, all I want is for my stuff to get fixed right and pay me for my time that I can't drive. Period. I'm not asking for anything more. Mm -hmm. Want to pay me on the low end and, and average it out? That's great, too. But when insurance and justice are calling me, talking about $2,000 for everything and, and a, you know, sign a confidentiality agreement so I can't talk about this, I don't know. I told them, you know what? Call me tomorrow. See if you can give me $2,500, and it's done. But if not, I'm, I'm going to the media even more, and I'm going to talk about this because I'm not your – normal driver, you know, I, I got over 12,000 rides. I'm at a 4.97% rating. And that's because I get one stars from uh, people that uh, do the, uh, the Uber pools that don't want other people to get picked up and they give me long ratings. Mm -hmm. You know, on Lyft, I'm at a solid 5% over 3,000 rides, period. So what will it take for Uber to make sure for their name not to get tarnished anymore? That's all I'm asking. Yeah, not only that, too, the story was that we were at least re referencing to. Did that even, I don't know, Dustin, did that even have them saying that the child was born in the car? Because I don't no, remember reading. No, it didn't reading. say anything like that. It, all it said was uh, it went into labor and he was screaming and then he, he ran a bunch of red lights to hurry up and get them to the hospital. It yeah. just made it seem like, like he was in panic mode and just didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, and I mean it, that puts it in more perspective of why obviously the seats would be would be so uh, have the fluids too because when like with the water breaking and stuff like that it just didn't. Yeah, didn't I mean make the whole sense. baby came out. You know, I mean the whole process went through. It wasn't just like oh, I just you know leaked a little or something like that. It's mm -hmm. like the whole thing happened. The kid was born in my car. I should get to name it. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, it's pretty. And then, yeah, this the same thing. At the very end of the article, it said that Uber had reached out and said they were paying for or willing to pay for, for cleaning. And I, that's when I even pointed out and I said, they're saying for cleaning, but that doesn't say replacement. And so, yeah, it, it's this wordplay that they're doing. And it's just crazy what Uber, Uber and both Lyft do um, because they're, they're going to come in and say one thing and then they're going to, you know, try to appease by saying, oh, yeah, we're talking with the driver and, you know, hey, we're getting it right from the driver's mouth here. And he's saying exactly how they're contacting him and what. Yeah, I, I've had so many uh, text messages through the Uber app 
and all they keep saying is like, we're sending it somewhere else. We hope to hear from you. We hope we can clear better, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But yet no one's contacted me. You want to make sure you screenshot those two in case they try to delete the whole conversation and act like it didn't happen. No, I have them saved. Okay. I, I have them saved. And, and, and my whole thing is like, really, you're lying to the public saying how you're taking care of stuff when you're not. Now, I'm at, a, I'm at a point where what do I do? All I want is to get my stuff clean, pay me for my lost time because I can't work. That's all I want. I don't want anything extra. I got 10 lawyers right away that started emailing me that want them to represent my case. I don't want the lawyers to get paid. I don't want lawyers to make money off of my thing. I just, just, just make it right so I can go back and keep working. Yeah, mm -hmm. you don't want to go through the headache of all this. You just want to get it done, get yeah. what you deserve, and move on. Yeah. yeah. And not only if that, if you, get, if you try to get lawyers yeah. involved, what if they're just yeah. like, oh, you're going to be deactivated, and then there goes all the money that you could have made after that. Well, yeah. they, can de they, they can deactivate me because I did nothing wrong. They can deactivate me because it would be like me being a whistleblower and then they're firing me. Mm -hmm. Then I have a lawsuit. Oh, you yeah. Know? I mean, but the problem is they take fake and false reports all the time over what the driver or actually what happened. Like they'll have people saying that, oh, the driver appeared drunk or was falling asleep at the wheel or mm -hmm. whatever. And then they'll, they can temporarily deactivate you but they can also permanently do it if they just wanted to. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's an unfortunate thing. And it's, it's one of those things where it's like, well, what should I do in that situation? And it's really tough to, to figure out too. It is tough because I make good money doing what I do. And, you know, and, and, and the thing is, this is how I provide for my family. Uh, not a lot of drivers can say they have over 12,000 rides in two years. Yeah, you're definitely hustling out there for sure. Yeah. I've been doing it forever before, and I don't even have 12,000. <laughs> and that's just with uh, Uber. I still got Lyft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of rides Yeah, you right said 3,000, so 15,000 uh, yes. over the last two years. You yes. know, you're averaging 7,500 rides a year, which is a, a hell of a lot of rides. Yeah. And it's crazy, mm -hmm. right? They can, they can raise all this money to fight EB5 and everything else. It's like you would think that was something like this that was obviously out of your control. If you would have known that the chick was, you know, going into labor or something like that, you could at least have the option to cancel the ride or, you know, not take it. And they should be just, they should just give you what you, you know, what, what, what's yours and move on. Yeah. I mean, that's just simple like that. Not try to be low ball, not even pay, not even try to offer enough that what everything's going to cost you total. It's like, then just hey. come out of your pocket. How is it coming out of your pocket? Like nothing should be coming out of my pocket. Things should be going in my pocket. Mm -hmm. If last year they can pay Beyonce ten thousand shares to do a concert for Uber, they could definitely pay me what I'm owed. Oh yeah, That's all I gotta say. And then well, two hundred thousand dollars for balloons. Yeah. And hopefully tomorrow they're gonna come back with something better. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And we'll be we'll be posting this video tomorrow. So. Uh, yeah, when you guys will be watching it, it'll be Wednesday or, I mean, Yeah, that's fine. That. <laughs> I mean, like, like I said, that's all I want is what's fair. Mm -hmm. If it's not going to be what's fair, then I can keep pressing and go to more media outlets and talk about how it's unsafe for us drivers, you know, to pick up people with phony names. You know, mm -hmm. the fact that I've had allegations of me being intoxicated when I don't fuck, when I don't drink you know, any false claims. And I've seen it happen to other Uber and Lyft drivers mm -hmm. where some oh, yeah, I got deactivated with Lyft for someone said I was drinking too. And I like rarely ever drink. So I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I had one time been activated because I was racist because I picked up somebody and I didn't pick them up. I showed up. I waited five minutes. I called, I messaged nothing. I went ahead and I canceled the ride because it, it was busy at that time at three in the morning where I was at to get another ride. Next thing you know, two days later, I get deactivated because I'm racist. I never even seen that person. You know, it took me ten <laughs> minutes. It took me ten minutes to get there. Not only did I wait the two minutes for free, I waited the three minutes. I texted, I called, nothing, and then I canceled, got my cancellation fee, and move on. Mm -hmm. How was that? I just show you how how petty people are. The stuff they will make up over to you know get a couple bucks back when they screwed up. Yep. Yeah. 
And that's now, the same thing that's Jose, happening here. This passenger screwed up, you know what I mean, on what, what happened in your car, but they, they can't be holding this person accountable because there's no information on this person. Thank it's you. almost like it didn't exist, but you're left with the, the, you know, the headache of having to deal with the aftermath. Mm -hmm. Now, Jose, do you have a dash camera? No, no I, I don't. I asked him that too. He asked oh, me that, and the reason I don't, last year something happened in my car. I called the Uber in Chicago. I said, look, something happened like this. If I get a dash camera, can I use that? I was told no. They do not honor dash cameras because it's, you know, it's illegal about the customer being filmed or not, and then they can't use it because of evasion of privacy. So Uber themselves is telling me I can't use a dash camera to prove a case. So even if I have a dash camera, what's the point if they're not going to honor it? Mm. Are you, is, I wonder if Illinois is a one-party, or I mean a two-party consent state. I, I think they're one-party. or Are they two? I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I I've had to our I have a dash camera and I've forwarded footage to Uber before on a ride and they were able to take it because of but New York is also a one party state so um, yeah. I'm wondering if it's if they're just yeah trying to so it might be your laws. state yeah that that might yeah. be a different thing so, but it's so still so always good point? to have the dash cam so that way you can give it to the police or something or news outlets if they need it or something like that well after and this I, like I think it. I am. And, yes. and the best thing is, I like it because no matter what, it's a deterrent. It keeps people in check. You know what I'm saying? Unless they want to be YouTube famous, they need to act right. So my whole plight is us Uber and Lyft drivers, actually a lot of us do the right thing and work hard. Mm -hmm. But yet we have no backing or help from anybody, not even the companies we work for that make lots of money. You know, if, if I made over a hundred grand last year, which I did in the year before, well, how much more is Uber making off of me if I'm making that? Oh yeah. Probably close, <laughs> to, least, least probably close to the same because of the, you know, if you look at the rides, a lot yeah. of people were getting 40 to 60% lately. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, Uber was taking about 40 to 60%. Yeah. So <laughs> that's where I'm at. That's my plight. I want to tell my story so people know that, it wasn't just a baby being born. It's, it's a lot of more issues on top of that. Mm -hmm. And at the end, what am I going to do? Who's going to help me out? And that this could happen to anybody because you just don't know. You can't just ask every woman that, you know, looks a little heavy that gets in your car. Like, oh, are you pregnant, miss? You can't just yeah. be doing all that because then that's a whole other issue. Yeah. And then yeah. not to mention, like you said, this is during the whole pandemic. So whether you think you're going to the hospital to, to, because of their essential worker or whatever, yeah. um, you know, you, you don't really know. And yeah, I mean, any ride can have any issue at any time and you really have no idea what or how it could present itself. Yeah. Well, that's all I got guys. And all thank right. you for listening to my story and I'll be looking forward to listening to watching this on Wednesday. Dustin, you got my number. You can call me anytime for anything. I appreciate that. Yeah, and hopefully uh, let me know, you know, when they finally come back. Hopefully they come back with something better and that, you you know, that satisfies you and, you know, gets everything taken care of how it should be. I will text you or call you. Right. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, Thank Jose. You. And you have a great You're rest welcome. of your night.